Hello, welcome back to the channel. Now, I want to start this video very with a like a rather uncomfortable truth. In 2026, if you are in the governance, risk and compliance field as a GRC analyst, and your primary job description is, you know, reporting on risk, creating dashboards, mapping controls to risk, you are not doing anything wrong. But like you are standing on the wrong side of where the GRC industry is moving. In 2026, the people who simply report risk are going to get stuck. The people who are able to engineer controls, they are the ones who are going to be in demand. They are the ones who are going to be uh, like in hot demand moving forward. Because with things like cloud automation, agentic AI, generative AI, companies are no longer struggling with reporting. Reporting is no longer that much of an issue. They are struggling with the speed at which to implement controls and how to make sure that those controls work and this is where grc engineering comes forward and in this video i want to talk about how if you are a governance risk and compliance analyst how to move into grc engineering and like why you should be doing that shift so let's get started if you're new to the channel my name is pamu Rijlal. i am a senior security consultant with aws and i've been in cyber security for the past 20 plus years and this whole like channel is about giving you advice and making sure you have an awesome 2026 going forward so let's get started uh, okay everybody so this is what i was referring to when i said uh, basically why every grc analyst should think about grc engineering in 2026 so first of all why do you need this shift most grc analysts they are awesome at knowing the frameworks you know they know iso 27001 soc 2 nist pci you name the framework they will know it they can write policies you know, conduct interviews, collect screenshots, prepare audit packs. I like I interact with them every day and, you know, they are amazing at their jobs. But who, what is the problem which is going forward? Most GRC analysts I see, they are still focused on the reporting side. So they create re re reports, which are great. I mean, describing risk, summarizing compliance status to the board or to the chief risk officer, to the CISO. They tell what the environment looks like and these are the risks. The problem with this is the work is descriptive and it does not scale over time. And I'll explain what this means. So you're simply describing what the environment is, right? This is your risk posture. And uh, the problem with this is, like I said, it is descriptive. Reporting is no longer a differentiator because of things like generative AI, because of like cloud automation, because of things like agentic AI. Senior management is not going to be struggling with reporting. Now you have that generative AI layer on top of reporting. Dashboards are everywhere. AI generated summaries are everywhere. If you use Copilot or any of those Gen AI tools, you know how easy reporting has become. And evidence collection is being automated away. You know, people are no longer just relying on screenshots. If you're just doing manual sampling, people are going to be complaining about the time you take. And just taking assurance once a year, it is considered to be weak level of assurance because environments are changing so rapidly. If you don't believe me, just ch ask yourself, uh, in, if you're working in a company, how did it look like one year before last December? And how does it look long? You will see just how many changes have happened in just one year. And the most critical problem is uh, GSC analysts do not scale. First of all, if you add more accounts, more like uh, uh, more accounts, more subscriptions, more systems, more like uh, scope, you need more GRC analysts, right? Because it's all being done manually. And more people mean more costs, more budgetary headlines. And then your, what do you call, your department comes under the scrutiny, you know. God forbid they are like uh, job losses or headcount cuts. You know what the problem is, right? So it's very crucial to be efficient in today's culture of AI and like uh, layoffs and everything. So the manual GRC analysis simply does not scale, especially if your environment gets more and more, right? So I'll take an example. First, let's take an example of the most common thing, which is there in almost every company, which is user permissions. So supposing you're reviewing user permission, let's take an example, it's AWS, right? You're going to be exporting the IM users and roles for multiple AWS accounts. You're going to send a spreadsheet. So maybe you've like have an automated system. You follow up repeatedly. Anybody who's worked in GRC, you know how it is, right? You take screenshots sometimes for their permissions. As the account organization grows, you add in more accounts, more and more accounts. Roles are getting multiplied. Owners are changing. Reviews are getting delayed or even worse, they're just approving it just to get it out of the way. It's, it's a burden, isn't it? It's just red tape. It's administrative burden because it's not scaling 
as your organization is uh, increasing now let's do the flip side if you are in GRC engineering how do they do this thing uh, uh, what do you call it, differently so they don't let go of governance they're still focused on governance right they still have knowledge of ISO 27001 GDPR NIST you name it right but they are embedding these controls into systems they are not reporting it so in this, instead of asking hey do we have evidence of this control they are designing and making sure that their input is there into the environment where this evidence gets produced automatically so basically they put in guardrails so that the that the environment cannot operate in any other way because those controls are bolted on you've heard of that shift left all the time right well this is shifting light in grc so the core tool set or the output of a GRC engineer. They put in policies within the code itself. They put in control validation pipeline. So when a new environment, for example, a new AWS account is being spun up, they have scripts which are going to make sure that all these controls, all these guardrails are already present. They have put in continuous compliance checks which immediately report, not after one year or after one quarter, daily reporting. And they're generating evidences automatically. So the guardrails are baked into the infrastructure itself right so the automation this will scale as more and more systems are added automation can scale one account or 100 account it doesn't matter right the controls are baked into the in, uh, environment itself and that makes it highly efficient one person can scale vertic instead of scaling horizontally as you add in more people you're scaling vertically and this becomes very very efficient you can focus on more critical activities instead of just focusing on one activity and just keep on adding more and more people and you know nowadays people headcount is very very difficult to get approved also so that's why it becomes even more uh, efficient and let's take the same example so instead of doing periodic quarterly reviews with IM permission you're going to be granting time bound roles which expire your privileges are going to be restricted by default because of US engineering because you've put in boundaries on the permissions IAM policies are going to be enforcing least privileges using conditions because you understand the conditions you know if this guy is in this department is coming from here these are the controls that are going to be enforced every access change is getting logged centrally and being reported also so you don't need spreadsheets access is getting automatically expired owners are only going to be approving the exceptions not the routine access and logs are becoming default evidence because you can put in reporting which extracts the data from the logs and just sends it to you automatically on a daily basis or just keeps it stored and protected so you see how efficient uh, this becomes so if you're convinced by this uh, what is the efficient way of becoming a grc engineer in 2026 i mean it's not complicated you don't need to do some fancy certification first of all people get scared because they say hey i'm not a coder i'm a non-technical person now i agree this would have been a hurdle two three years ago now we have very very powerful ai powered interfaces especially things like vibe coding you can literally describe what you want to do in in an id and it will generate a very close approximation of what you want i'm not saying it's going to be perfect you still need to troubleshoot it but start experimenting with it learn just enough scripting to automate evidence collection it is not that difficult especially in an ai world look at infrastructure as code where you can put in these controls by default and guardrails which is you put in guardrails at the very top level of your infrastructure that makes sure that people cannot break out of these controls instead of reporting whether a control was broken you're going to make sure that that control never gets violated in the first place so the, this is the mindset that you need to have start with this i have other videos also on grc engineering i'll put that if you still need help i have a course on grc engineering you can take a look it's not a mandatory course you don't have to take it you can just take a look at my other videos but this is just to help people master grc engineering get the toolkit get hands-on as quickly as possible so i hope this was useful to you like uh, my final thoughts would be Again, this is not an attack on people who are doing GRC analysis. You're not doing bad work, but you are operating in a world that is slowly going away. It, it, GRC analysis was very for a much slower and a more static world, I would say, before till 2021, I would say. Right? But environment is rapidly changing. Cloud, AI, continuous delivery has made it like this like a systems problem and you need to become more efficient it is no longer grc is no longer a documentation problem especially in this very very fast moving world that we are working on so if you want to make sure that your grc career is future proof please do take a look at grc engineering i hope this was useful to you thank you very much i'll see you in the next video